Hi, welcome to another Unity Mobile from Scratch tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to start looking at the touch interface or actually touching the screen and then touching things that are in the environment. This is probably one of the first things that people want to do is be able to touch the screen and click on an object that's in the environment. Now, this um, current tutorial actually is just as um, relevant for 3D PC development as it is for mobile. So we're just talking about the mouse at the moment and we're going to look at the different camera um, types that we've got or the projections. Okay, so what I've got here is just a starter project and I've got an add a main camera. I've got a empty game object that I've called touch manager and I've attached to it a script called touch manager and I'll show you that in a minute. I've got a sphere sitting in the environment and just a light so that we can see what's going on. Right now in the script itself, if I just open that up, what it's doing is that um, it's only in the update function and it's saying if the mouse button is pressed down, the left mouse button, which is zero, then we're going to get hold of the mouse's position, turn it into a world position and then draw a ray from the position of the mouse out into the world. Now, the first lesson here is that the coordinates of the graphics window, uh, the one that you're actually looking through, are not the same as the coordinates of the world. And therefore, the point 000, zero in the 3D world is not like the upper left hand corner on your screen. They're two separate coordinate systems. So if you take a look at this diagram, I've drawn the screen and the screen is basically a rectangle or square flat surface. And therefore it only has an X and a Y direction associated with it. Now by default in computer graphics, screen coordinates start from zero, zero up in the top left hand corner. Think of the screen itself like a window pane that you're holding in your hand and you're looking through it at the real world. And the real world, which is actually in 3D coordinates, so it has an X, a Y and a Z, can be orientated in any direction based on how you've got your screen positioned. Now, these two coordinate systems are completely independent. And when you're working with a mobile device or a screen that you want to interact with a world within, like the virtual worlds, then what you need to do is take a position on the screen. For example, let's say you've touched this particular screen here at this point, which is 3, 3. You then have to perform a calculation that works out, well, where would that point actually be in the real 3D space? And in this example here, you can see that it's at 13, 12, 2. So you've got these two coordinate systems, the screen coordinate system and the world coordinate system. And it's very important not to get these mixed up. And the other thing is that you need to know is how to actually translate a value um, that you've touched on the screen into its world position. So if you had a game where you wanted to click on the screen and for objects to appear at that touch location, you'd have to calculate where that touch position is in 3D space, given the 2D coordinates of the touch. Now, luckily uh, for us, Unity provides some really great functions that do all the work for us and you don't have to be um, too savvy with the math to get it right. So let's go back just to Unity and have a look at this demo again that I've created. So let's go back to the code. Um, so that's what this screen to world point function is doing. It's taking the mouse input, um, mouse position, and translating, uh, it's not really translating, is it? Because that would be a movement. It's uh, transforming, I should say, into a 3D coordinate that we're calling the mouse pos here. Then what I'm doing is using that mouse pos to draw a ray straight ahead, so in the forward direction of the camera, um, for a length of a thousand and it's going to be green. All right, so um, you can save that if you're following along and attach it to this touch manager here. Right, so if we hit 
play. I'm just going to select this main camera first because I want you to be able to see the camera. Let's hit play. Now, when I click with the mouse, have a look over in the scene where that ray is drawing. As far as I'm concerned, I'm clicking on top of this sphere, but the ray that's being generated isn't. Okay, it's actually coming from the center of the camera's position and going straight out into the middle of the world. And it doesn't matter where I click on this screen, it's always coming from that middle position or very close to it. This particular camera is set to perspective view and that is the actual shape of the viewing volume of the camera. If you select the camera in the hierarchy and look over in the inspector, you'll see that the projection type is perspective and a perspective camera means that things further away appear to be smaller just like in real life. The shape of the camera's viewing volume in this case becomes a pyramid um, or a frustum which is the shape of a pyramid with the top cut off. So right at the very top if we can get in close to the near plane of the camera. So this is the plane closest to the player. You can see that's a very little square compared to the far plane of the camera. If I zoom out even further, which you can see is absolutely enormous compared to that near plane. So when I'm clicking on this screen here, relative to that far plane, I'm actually not moving the mouse very far at all um, on that very, very small little area just here. Now that's perspective view. So it makes it actually quite difficult just to project a ray from the position of the mouse click out into the environment and think that you're actually clicking on an object when you're not. If for a moment we switch our camera to orthographic, what happens and I have to zoom out again for this, is that the orthographic view creates a rectangular prism. Okay, so there's no perspective lines. Things further away do not appear smaller. In this case, the far plane for this camera is a very, very long way away, so you can't actually see that it's a rectangular prism. But I can, in the inspector, just bring that far plane a little bit closer. I might have to set it by hand to get it down smaller. So there's, there it is at 100 and you can now see that far plane. Now because all of the projection lines in this environment are straight and parallel, when I click on this screen, you'll see that my click location ray actually goes parallel straight out into the environment. So if I click over this sphere, the ray itself will actually go straight through that sphere. So it's much easier in the orthographic setting to actually click and select something in the environment. Now why are we worried about this um, ray that's being drawn out in there? Because that's the method that we're going to use to um, determine if we've actually hit something or clicked on something. So just bring up another little diagram. Okay, what we're doing is we're grabbing a ray, uh, drawing it out, sending it out into the world from the screen hit point, and then we're going to determine whether it's actually hit something. Now, Unity has um, ray cast physics. So a ray cast is when you send a ray out into the environment and the ray can go off in any particular direction based on the way you've programmed it. We're programming it in this case to come straight from the mouse click or what will become the touch point and go straight into the environment. Um, and then so we calculate if there has been a hit and Unity will tell us if we've hit something um, and where we've actually hit it. So you can grab hold of a hit point which will also give you access to the object that was hit and therefore you know that you've hit something. Now um, this method is much easier in orthographic because you've got these parallel lines going straight out. Um, with the perspective view you need to think of a different way to actually project your line into the environment so that it's not um, always starting from that very, very small top near plane on that camera, uh, which I'll just go back to for a moment here. 
so that when my mouse is actually over that sphere, then I'm getting a ray that is also over that sphere. Now, if you think about this a bit, what's actually happening as far as you're concerned is when you click down with the mouse, you're not clicking from this sort of tiny eye of the camera and out into the environment. You're clicking on this background and this background far plane is actually the size of this screen. So at the very, very furthest reaches of what the camera can see in this game view is the far plane. So when I click here with the mouse, I actually want to project a ray that goes from this point back to here or the other way around from this point out to there. Or if I clicked over here, which is over here, um, from here out to there. Okay, so that you get a perspective projection of that ray into the environment. Right, so to do that, let's uh, have a look at the modified code. We need to calculate two values. First of all, the near value. Okay, so this is the old value we were calculating before where the mouse was clicking on the actual um, near plane of the camera. And we also need to figure out where it's clicking on the far plane of the camera. Now, to do that, what we've done here is to create a new vector 3 and use the X and the Y position of the mouse click. And for its Z value, for the far position, we will use the camera's far click plane value. And for the near one, we use the camera's near clip plane value. Now with those two click on points, remember they're still in screen space, essentially. They're not in 3D space. So we still need to run both of those values through the screen to world point function, which is going to make them into uh, 3D positions in the actual world itself. So you get the position near the camera and the position right at the back of the camera's viewing volume. Now when we draw a ray, we draw it from the near position and we project it out into space along the vector that is the far position minus the near position. So that gives you the vector that goes from close up to the back plane where you've clicked. Um, again, we're doing that in green. So um, type that in, save it, come back into Unity. Now just click the camera again so you can see that it's viewing volume and click on play. Now when we click in the environment, have a look at the ray that we're getting. It's going from our near plane where we wanted it and it's going out into the world and hitting the background where you would expect. So if we go over this sphere, you'll see the green ray is now going over the sphere. If we go right down to this bottom corner here, you'll see that we're in the right um, bottom corner, I should say the left bottom corner, the left bottom corner down there for that viewing volume. And if we zoom out a little bit further and just move around a bit so we can see that far plane over here, if I drag this down to that corner, we're reaching down to there, and you'll find that you get the same up here and over there as well. So this is working for the case of our orthographic, uh, sorry, perspective. Let's have a look at what it does with the orthographic. So here's our orthographic. Uh, let's bring this far plane back into 100 so it's much smaller and move it around. And let's click. And we get exactly the same result as we did before. Remember, because we're still using the near plane and the far plane, but with the orthographic view, um, it's exactly the same size. They're both square in this case, and therefore you're getting these parallel lines being pushed straight out, um, and you'll get exactly the same result as the code before. So this particular code is going to manage projections out into space, um, whether it's orthographic or or perspective. So um, this is the particular ray starting position and this will be the ray's direction. So in the next video we'll turn that 
into an actual raycast and send it out into our environment and get a message back when we've actually hit that sphere.